John Bart. With late night comment and conversation. On BBC Radio Lancashire. John Barnes, BBC Radio Lancashire and BBC Radio Manchester. If you have a sensitive nature, uh, if you get a bit worried by rats, uh, then maybe you should think twice about uh, listening uh, to the item over the next half hour. Uh, What do you think of when I say rats? Does filth, dirt and disease come to mind? If it does, you're probably right. Uh, Recently, I went down on the canal with Tim Cook, who you may know from the Wigan ukulele band, Chonkin' Fettle. Tim is also an expert ratter. And down on the canal, he told me more. Right, we're not too far away from the town centre of Wigan itself, about five minutes' walk. And we're basically on the footpath of the Leeds-Liverpool Canal with the junction to the Bridgewater Canal. So what we've got here, basically, is an ideal scenario for, for rats, really. We've got the water, and beyond this wall here, we've got a local immunity site. Yeah. Um, and they do their utmost with pest control to keep everything. But, like everything else, you can try and try. You can control your rats, but you'll never eradicate them. So that is, like, my job now, to come down here. The thing with this is we are now on what was British Waterways land, it's now the Waterways Trust, I think. So I will have to get in contact with those guys and just to uh, highlight what I found today. But as you can see along this fence line, John, we've got some um, some holes going over the fence and here we've got some classic rat runs. And the rat run is just basically a worn piece of land where the rats are running to and forth all day and it, it, it just becomes worn down. Because what we've got here is is a brick wall in front of us, and next to that is kind of a a metal fence, a corrugated metal fence, and at the bottom of that, where that meets the ground, there are a few places where clearly uh, rats can get under. Yeah. I mean, they will burrow down quite a good number of feet, really. They're very, very agile at climbing as well as digging sort of a thing, so... uh for it to scale that wall would be no problem because what it would do is put its feet up against the brickwork here and it's back against there yeah. and it would climb up that way. That's amazing to think that it could climb up that, that fence which is probably what, eight foot tall? Yeah, yeah, and it's pretty coarse this brickwork so I mean the claws on it, it would basically be like us walking up a ladder. Tim, is this an ideal place for rats? It's got all the combinations. I mean rats need three things, it needs food, it needs water and it needs what we call herbridge which is basically a house somewhere to live so we've got the canal just there we've got the river douglas and then obviously we've got people using this footpath from the town center and they're throwing as you can see they're throwing food waste there's wrappers and crisp packets plus the amenity site is getting food and rubbish that is constantly on the move over the side on the mm. side so it that is not a problem but on the earth they can smell what's there so that is basically what's attracting them but i'm going to concentrate a little bit further down the canal in a while because yeah. i believe down there we've got some uh, more heavier activity so we'll have a look at that we always hear that you shouldn't drop rubbish because it attracts rats how easy is it to attract rats rats can basically smell food a mile off you know we've got people now putting food out for the birds for the squirrels and i've done people in the past where who have met and they've putting food out for the rats they actually like the rats coming but when you explain the diseases they carry and the damage they can do they soon change their mind you see what kind of damage can they do the technical name for it is raw deer that is the name rodent comes from raw deer means to gnaw and that's what rats do their teeth is constantly growing at an alarming rate. If they didn't gnaw, the teeth would basically outgrow each other and they would overlap and they couldn't chew. So they will chew anything from bricks to metal to the flex on your on your electricity. So if you're ever unfortunate to get a rat in your house, the first thing they'll go for is the electric cable or your soap because it's got that texture. You can see in here what I've got in this tub. This is basically a wax block. Yeah. They love wax, like I said, lard, soap, rubber. That's laced with a poison, and it's got a few little nit bits in there, there just to attract the... But that will kill, that single block will kill an adult rat. But you've got to be careful what you, where you put these, because rats can t- pick this up and run off with it. And if it leaves that down in the open land, and a dog comes along and eats it, we could be in trouble. Yeah. So you can see there's a hole through there, 
And what you tend to do with that is put it on either a skewer... Yeah, this is in the middle of the block. Yeah, in the, the middle bottom. of the block. Or you could put some wire through and tie it to whatever. So the rats have basically got, got to eat it there and then on the spot. That's kind of like a, a rat-killing kebab. It, it certainly is. And if you put three on with a meat pie, you've got a wigan kebab. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, the other p- kind of poison is this loose grain. And now that is cooked wheat. It's got wheat, barley and... Again, these little biscuit things just to attract it. But that is natural food. That is what they would find out in the open field. But you can imagine a rat where it lives 90% of the time in the sewer system. What is floating by there? And they will eat that and drink it. And then they come and run into your house sometimes, all over your kitchen worktops. So they are pretty disgusting, aren't they? They are. I mean, a rat to another rat is a, is a pretty attractive creature because they are always preening and cleaning themselves. But it's what they carry in the urine and the faeces that are the dangerous bits, really. Uh, vile disease, um, which is a waterborne virus from the urine, were on the canal. That virus would live in the canal, it would live in the river. So fishermen, anglers, people messing about with water are highly at risk of catching leptospirosis, which is vile disease. Tim, how did you become a rat catcher? I was working for the local authority as a, as a lifeguard at the local swimming paths and I just happened to look in the job bulletin one day and there was a job there for a, the pest control and I thought, I fancy that, you know, it's different. Instead of being stuck in a swimming pool all day, I'll, I'll be out driving around. So I applied for the job and I got it and that was it really. But the interview process, they said, uh, right, um, what's your idea of pest control? And I thought, well, I'm pretty handy with a rolled-up newspaper. Yes. And there was nothing else I could think of at the time. And they said, would you have a problem killing an ant? And I said, no, no one. A fly? I said, no. A mouse? And I thought, where is it going, this? Because I, I am an animal lover, yeah. you know. And then they went up to rabbits and foxes. Could you kill a fox? And I thought, how on earth would you kill a fox? So I just basically lied through my teeth. I said, no, I won't have a problem with that sort of thing. But... They never ended up doing rabbits, or never did rural pests, you know, it stopped at the rats and that was it really, so... And I've been doing it 15 years now. Right, so, as we say, we're here at the side of the canal. You've got the rat poison. We have. Uh, I was a bit disconcerted the fact that you actually touched it with your hands. If you're not touching this regularly, you're all right. You've really got to ingest this stuff. It's got to go into the... You've uh, got to eat it. Yeah, you have. You know, and you can see the colour there, John. It's blue, bluey-green, and it's that colour because there is nothing like that in the food chain. Unless you're married to Bridget Jones and she serves up the old uh, famous blue soup thing. But no, so if anybody serves you up uh, some nice roast and it's got that colouring, don't eat it because they're trying to do something to you. But that that is an anticoagulant like warfarin. But this is a second generation poison, which means warfarin was a first generation poison, but rats were becoming resistant to it. There was pockets within the UK, and I think from like your uh, hometown of Dudley in the Midlands, they yes. were one of the first to recognise that rats were eating warfarin and it wasn't doing anything. So they've come up with these, what they call, second-generation poison. This is called Dithenicum, and there's Brophenicum, which is in the other tub there. Both exactly the same. They're uh, anticoagulant. It thins the blood. So when the rats eat this within 24, 48 hours, when they're squeezing through these little tight gaps here, it's breaking the blood vessels within the body and it causes internal bleeding. Quite painless. What it does is cuts off the supply to the brain and they'll just become disorientated, very sleepy, and that's it. They just go to sleep. Because it does kind of sound pretty awful, you know, internal bleeding and, it does. and that kind of stuff, it, you know it, it does, but like I say, this has been done in laboratories, you know, it's all been tested, whether you agree with animal testing on one thing or another if we didn't control rats that we'd be in a bit of a mess, because these things breed like you would not believe Tim, we'll take a look a bit further down the canal. Okay, John, yeah, no problem I've been ratting on the canal in Wigan with Tim Cook uh, Tim is an expert ratter. We move further down the towpath, the point where the canal crosses the River Douglas, a great area for rats, as Tim explained. Well, in this uh, environment, where we're basically just in a natural place, we've we've obviously got no people living here. I mean, the first protocol normally would be somebody on the phone screaming down the phone, I've seen a rat. Yeah. Uh, and then I would turn up 
nine times out of ten you don't see anything because it's already gone but what you then look for is the uh, the physical evidence mm. and that is either damage like we've seen it with the gnawing or the burrows if it's muddy like it is around here you've got footprints down there where you can see the the very active and there'll be a drop-ins because rats have a specific toilet area where they, that they'll just deposit their drop-ins so there's 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 quite a few on say the rat run so we're just looking out now for the obvious signs that rats are present around here so there's quite a few we've got footprints down there and you can see with the land through that fence is very smooth so the rats uh, the, I, I would say they're active and it's ideal for them because it's fenced off there's no what we call predators i mean the humans are walking on this footpath they're not bothered about this overgrown land here you may get foxes coming in at night and uh, cats but other than that the rats are just happy to breed on their own we think of rats as being nocturnal is that true there was always the case of them being nocturnal, but as, as times change and modern society is now, rats will come out when it's confident for them. The thing is with a rat, its eye size is shocking. Everything is just a blur. So if you stand still long enough and a rat comes out, you're just part of the furniture, unless you make a sudden move or a noise. What r- rats will rely on is the hearing and the noses. The sense of smell is razor sharp. So as a rat is moving along, it's constantly excreting urine and that is just like the magnet it'll nose will stick to that so you can imagine in a sewer system where it's pitch black a rat will run around like us just walking down the pavement and if you're ever unfortunate to get one in your house the way they'll get in is up the cavity wall same again it's pitch black but to a rat it's just like us walking up a ladder so we're looking over the wall then tim and it looks like there's rat droppings here yeah we've just um come bit further down the um, the canal here and it, I think that is an ad- actual ideal nesting spot if you just move this log here you've got some uh, rotten wood looks like twigs these droppings here if you just get one yeah. oh see, that's lovely they see and that is quite still quite soft and pliable yeah. so uh, if it's glistening like that it's fresh like I said, I'll go back to the house. I mean, people go into there and said, I found rat droppings, but sometimes they're quite hard. If that's quite a... It's, it's old. It's it's behind the wall. We've got this other piece of plywood here yeah. that's covering it up. You can see some of our friends have been dropping alcohol tins and other kinds of paraphernalia down. So they'll drink the dregs of that, because like I said, they, they do need a good food source. But it's just ideal, this. It's ideal harbourage. They'll, they'll scramble across that brickwork there, down into the canal, get some uh, water, back up here. And like I said, there'll be a few uh, of our friends dropping burgers and kebabs over that bridge at, uh, tonight. Those rat droppings are fairly soft, so so how recent are they? Oh, within 24 hours. I would say they're probably from this morning. So it's pretty infested around here, then? It is, and that, that's the worrying thing, you see. Because you can imagine now the, the waterways the amount of land they've got to cover and if, it, if we, that's my job now it's it's, me, it's down to me to inform these guys here this particular spot is a bit of rat activity they will have their own private pest controllers who will deal with this they'll come down and get it sorted but if nobody complained about it you see you've got lock keepers cottages here coming yeah. through so there's people living there they must see the rats at night you know so they've probably got uh, a pest controller involved but I'm more concerned about this here now, because like I say, if they, if they start to get into this building, there could be some damage. We just have a canal boat coming past, it's very picturesque, I bet they don't know about all the rats just around them. They probably don't, but I can imagine if these guys move up on the canal sometimes, they've probably seen more rats than me, really. It, it just goes hand in hand, it's just one of those things, I mean rats are, uh, they, they, they can swim up to a mile in open water, you know. So That's extraordinary. I mean, you get these people who try and drown rats, which is, it's, even as a pest controller's point of view, it's not the done thing. And when they've lifted the lid up off the bucket, the rats jumped out, you know, because they can scramble around in the in the water. But, uh, yeah, that's that's the ideal uh, way of living that, John. Very nice, eh? Yeah, fantastic. Just need a pint of beer, though, that guy at the back. <laughs> so, we'll wander back down the canal. OK. And you can show me how to set the poison. OK, will do. Who says we don't bring you lovely, lovely, fluffy things late at night? Uh, ratting uh, with Tim Cook. Tim 
is a ratting expert. So we're back on the canal now and we had seen lots of evidence of rats around, lots of evidence of their activity, but no actual rats themselves. We haven't. They've let us down. I think they must have known we was coming. Yeah. But, but you've got your big bucket here. I have. So what do we do now? Well, what I'm going to do now is um, I've got some of these little bags, like little toffee bags that you get from the uh, corner shop, put your sweets in, and I'm just going to put um, a few grams of Sixpence poison. worth of um, rat yeah, poison. Yeah, rat poison, please, sir. And I'm going to just drop them down these burrows here and basically just over this wall here, which is off the waterways land. A bit of no man's land, real, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of rat activity down there. Oh, there's one, John. There's, one. there's a live one, John. Can you see it? Oh, yes. There he is, just popped out of his burrow. And he's having a sniff around, so if we just keep quiet. He's having a mooch. That is a big fella, that. Now you see, he's probably sensed us, because he's just froze. But if we're uh, quiet, and he's just taking it in the surroundings, really, I think he knows there's something going on. That's a big tail. And it, well... That is a thing that puts a lot of people off, you see, the tail. That is enormous. What was that about you saying uh, we've not seen any rats, John? <laughs> and seconds later... <laughs> As if on cue. It's looking at us now. It is. But like I say, all we'll be is a blur. There you go, it's having a little mooch about. So the poison we use, it's, um, like I say, it's the anticoagulant. So if I drop some down over there, and it will just be enough poison to kill an adult rat. Once they've eaten that, 24 to 48 hours, depending on the health of the, the rat itself and the size of it, it will have done its job. So the rat dies. What if something comes along and eats the rat? Because they are cannibals, aren't they? Well, they are. And there's, um, obviously, because we're here, we have foxes and owls and other bits of wildlife. What happens is, like with anything in the medical industry, it's all done on uh, stringent tests, this. It was done in a laboratory where they do what they call an LD50 test, which is a lethal dose 50, and it's quite technical. But basically what it is, is they would give lab animals certain amounts of poison to see how much would kill them just enough. And then they would give that animal to something else to see if it would actually kill or have any effect. So if something came down and ate a dead rat, it would not poison it. So there's, an, there's no what they call secondary poisoning involved. So we're at the side of the wall. There are these holes that the rats go down. Some of these are, are pretty big holes. Uh, you'll put some poison down there. Does anyone ever use ferrets these days to go ratting? Yeah, quite right. There's quite a few. I mean, the private pest controllers, they will use... And that's your game keepers as well, they will use that. And as you can see, there's quite a few burrows. But what these burrows will do, they will link up to one sort of a hub. Um, so what would happen is a front door and a back door, technically. So if there is anything trying, like a ferret trying to get down the front door, the rats can disappear out the back. But what they will do is put a net over that back door and effectively catch the rat in the... And you still get people using dogs, Jack Russells, especially on farmland and stuff like that. If you move a couple of hay bales in the winter months, the rats will just scurry. I mean, the breeding ratio to a rat is, is phenomenal. I mean, you're talking from being born, within a month, they're sexually active. That is extraordinary. Yeah. And they don't mind who they breed with. Mums, dad, aunties, uncles, brothers, sisters. Incest rules, basically, with a rat. They can have anything from 7 to 14 in a litter. Seven's the average, 14 has been known. So you can imagine that multiplied every month or every other month, how many rats you've actually got from one litter. OK, so you've got the poison here. What are you going to do? So we're just going to, um, like I say, just make these bags up and I'm just going to drop them down these burrows. Because of the situation with this, well, I'm not too concerned about what we call secondary poisoning with dogs, cats or anything, because it's in an enclosed yard. So I'm just going to throw the bags in and then I will call back next week and I will see if there's any bodies, come back, remove the bodies, rebait if necessary. And like I say, on this side of the wall, I'm going to report this through to the Water Waste Commission and uh, let their boys deal with it. Tim, thank you very much. John, pleasure. John Bart. With late night comment and conversation. On BBC Radio Lancashire.